I splashed out and bought this solid tungsten carbide straight flute, um, one flute cutting bit and I have now a collet to try it with and as far as I can tell it doesn't seem to be having the problems that that other collet was having seems to be properly centered and straight but it's a bit hard to tell because it's not a symmetrical bit it sort of has this one flute so it's uh, as you turn it around it's a little bit hard to tell exactly how it's supposed to look um, but I'm just going to give this a try on plywood and see how that works since it's straight it shouldn't be pulling the plywood up anymore either which is hopefully a, a plus and I'm also going to try ramping because I discovered that Estel Cam lets you ramp into a cut instead of just plunging straight down so let's see how it goes in the Man, it's still, it's still chattered there, isn't it? Uh-oh, I just jogged this back to um, take this piece of plywood out and I noticed that sitting underneath the Z-axis all that time or at least part of that time was one of these screws which has fallen out of the lead nut um, attachment that I have inside there. Uh, it's the one that's going across horizontally. Uh, so I think this might be a good time to try these anti-backlash um, lead screw or lead nut thingies that I got. I did get a bunch of these but I've been putting off trying them because the machine has been working fairly well so far so I didn't really think it was absolutely necessary to do it immediately and another reason is because I'll only be able to use one of these vertical sides to attach the um, so you attach the main piece of that to there and then this side is not actually attached to it, it's only stuck onto, this, onto the thread of the screw itself. Um, so that means that it was a little bit of a waste to even have this over here because it's not going to be used. Uh, what I could do perhaps is put a spacer between these so that there is twice as much vertical um, force. I mean, it'll be less bendy if you know what I mean. So this bit that sticks down at the moment is quite bendy in that direction and if I'm only using one of them um, I'm getting less force actually put into the upper part of the structure. Since it's a bit of a pain in the ass to undo all of the structure I was thinking to just change the lead nuts in the Z axis and the X axis and, and leave these ones as is because these are the ones that have lock nuts in them so they weren't giving me so much trouble. But when I put this on here it feels really good and it was so easy to get on <laughs> compared to uh, the other ones so I think it might be worthwhile to replace them all and there's actually I can feel a tiny tiny little bit of movement but it's not as much as I would have thought because it's, I think even without the spring these nuts have less movement on the thread than than these other ones that I was using. So it will be worthwhile switching to them, I think. And regarding what I was saying with the um, not being able to use both of these vertical plates, um, so what I'm gonna have to do is put this inside like that. And this plate here is just not gonna be really used much at all. Um, but I think that will be okay. I think it'll be okay, I hope it'll be okay. Another nice thing about these new lead nuts is that these holes are already threaded inside there so I don't need to tap it myself. And they're M3 screws instead of M4 which is actually kind of good because it means that my holes are, well one they're going to be big enough of course, and they also don't need to be in the exact right place to fit. So um, it lets me sort of once it's tightened in there, I'm just using screws that I use from my quadcopters actually, so I have thousands of those sitting around, which is quite handy. 
Um, I can't get a lock nut onto here because the spring is in the way, which is a bit of a bummer, so I might have to use Loctite to get these screws to stay in, um, you know, permanently. But um, it does let me sort of sh move this around just a few fractions of a millimetre to get it in the right place because the holes are going to be slightly large. So all in all, this is looking to be very convenient, certainly very quick to get it lined up and in there compared to my other method. And it makes a bit of a funny noise, but I think it's just the spring sort of vibrating or moving a little bit there. Okay, I've uh, put the new lead nuts in for the X and Y axis at the moment. This one here, all on its own, took me about two, probably more than two hours to get it right and then I got a bit quicker at it after that. Unfortunately this one was pretty good to start with so that one didn't take long. But <clears throat> the problem is, well it's not really a problem I suppose, it's how they're supposed to be, but what took me so long was that I found that with these when you have it all sort of kind of relaxed and it's in its axis where, it's, where it wants to be, you can turn it fairly easily. But if you get it off the axis a little bit, like that, now it's very hard to turn. Now you probably didn't see anything change in the video, but what I did was I just pushed it up a little bit. Well, you, you might be able to see it move a little bit. It's probably less than a degree, but having it off by just that little fraction makes it very, very tight. So I guess the, the tolerance is good. I mean, it's a very small range of movement, but when you have it on that when you have it on that axis line, it's actually quite nice. So it's working as it should. But anyway, that made things very tricky to get everything aligned because, um, yeah, I just had to get it a lot more exact. Uh, but now, <coughs> when I run it, it has no vibrating noises, although it does have a bit of a scratchy sound, but what I think that is is the spring. It sort of makes a, a noise like a creaking old tree or something. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh yeah, and one change I made from last time is that I'm not going to bother putting the pillow block onto the back of the lead screw here. It was just such a pain in the ass. I don't think I would have ever really been able to get it to line up properly and still have a, a relatively friction-free turning torque. Um, so I'm just going to do, do without it. They're not actually that critical. You do need to have the one at the front though of course because that's going to be the like the base to push against when you're trying to push this backwards and forwards. Okay I have everything together now. I had quite a bit more trouble with the z-axis but eventually got there I think. Um, I left the bottom pillow block off of the z-axis as well. Unfortunately I couldn't get that to work. I'm going to try this single flute 3mm bit on aluminium and I'm going to try something that was suggested in the comments and that is to take a very very shallow cut each time. So I'm just going to try one pass at 0.1mm for now and see what happens with that.
It was still chattering a little bit, but it uh, did a, quite a nice job there. But it's only barely just scraped the surface. So I think I'll um, set it up to do the whole depth. It'll take 14 steps to do it like that though. It's going to take forever. That's it there. It's a little bit hard to get a good look at it with the camera. But it looks fairly nice. So that's how that one turned out. It's the large one on the bottom left. Now that I have something that can cut through aluminium without making a complete mess of it, I thought I might try something a little bit more ambitious. So this is my design here. It's going to be a two centimeter cube and I thought this would be a good test because if it's not cut fairly precisely all these pieces are not going to slot into each other so this will be like the sides here and then the top and the bottom up there um, and because it's a three millimeter diameter bit I have to make a, quite a few large ugly cutouts like this to make sure that the other piece is going to be able to slot all the way in there and that's a little unfortunate because it means that I can't really make it into a die which is what I was planning to do because you've got to have six well the largest you need was six so I was thinking you know roll a die and you know you know what I mean <laughs> um, so this would be a one and this would be two or whatever like that um, but yeah it's just a little bit too much I think at the moment plus I don't really want the bit to be plunging straight down like that so I'd have to make it slightly larger than the bit so maybe 3.2 millimeters so that it goes down in a bit of a spiral instead of straight down um, and it's just going to take ages to do even the cutting of the outside so I'm just going to leave the the die number holes off for now That's what it's going to look like. I uh, think it's okay. The design of the CNC doesn't leave much room vertically and I thought that would be okay but um, well it has been okay but it really doesn't leave much room for anything else so I have a about a 3.2 millimeter 1 8 inch that is a piece of plywood on the wasteboard and the wasteboard is 12 millimeters thick and that leaves me about probably less than a millimeter for the bottom of this plate to go over a screw. I um, wasn't actually thinking about the height of the heads of the screws because I was only thinking of um, how high that thing had to be but you do have to consider other stuff as well don't you? But anyway it's not a problem for now. Okay, so that's how that turned out. Not too bad. There's a little bit too much space between the um, the slots, so it can actually move around a bit more than I expected. Don't know if you can see it. I'm trying to move this up and up and down on the right hand side. Not bad actually. Just a little bit more than I thought. So I think this um, bit is not actually cutting a nice three millimeter it's maybe cutting a little bit more um, so to try and make them fit a bit tighter for these last two pieces the top and the bottom I told it that the bit was 3.1 millimeters in the cam program that is so it actually made these a little bit bigger than they would have been otherwise and then they slot in there pretty good there we go so um, yeah it's not too bad. It took a couple of minutes for each one, so it wasn't too slow either. I think I might try and make just one of these sides in aluminium and see how that goes. It's going to take a long time, so I'll just do one. So here's what that looks like in chili pepper. Uh, it's three millimeters thick, so at 0.1 millimeter step down, that's 30 uh, iterations. 
and it reckons it's going to take two hours. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Um, yeah, this is, this is going to be a bit tedious, isn't it? So anyway, let's give it a try. turned out pretty good. I stopped it before the end of the program because it's already made its way through the aluminium and it was well less than two hours but it was still over an hour and a half but it has done a very nice looking job so this bit here the only evidence of something strange happening is this bit here on the just there there's um, an indentation there I think that's where it was chattering where it it plunged in to go to the depth of the next level each time and it is ramping down but uh, it doesn't ramp down very smoothly still so that's why there's that little funny but there I think, uh, apart from that it's all quite nice okay I'm gonna try that again, I'll just do one more I think just to see if I can get it to run a bit faster uh, I did a couple of tests here running at uh, three times the depth of cut so everything else is the same, uh, the ramp is a little bit shallower uh, and it seems okay although I had one problem See this slot here, I was going only in the Y direction and I struck a strange issue and sort of seemed like the bit was bouncing up and down vertically and I think that might be because my structure here is a bit weak in that direction I mean it's not rigid in that direction and then I ran the same thing over here going only in the X direction and it was fine so um, yeah, I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out because this is going to have to go in all directions. But it's only the ramping down that seems to be the issue. As long as it's moving horizontally only, then it seems to be okay. Anyway, let's give this a shot. Ooh, it seems to be okay. As far as fitting together goes, they are they fit together okay, but there's a little bit of a space there. I'm just moving it up and down. So that's the same as the plywood one, I think. So I guess if I wanted to have these fitting in tighter, I'd have to modify my CAD design rather than mess around with the um, trying to trick it with the CAM program to get it tighter. Uh, that's pretty good I think. There's a slight difference in the smoothness of the surface too. The one on the left is the one I did first and that was doing 0.1 millimeter step downs so it did 30 revolutions around the edge to do that cut and the one on the right is the one I just did with 0.3 millimeter step downs so it was doing it only did 10 circuits to get that one cut and it's a little bit rougher
One tricky point about having it going in such small depth steps is that you end up with this very paper thin sort of aluminium foil thickness piece at the last step and it's hard to hold it down so the last couple of times I've done this it actually flew out like you saw just before. Okay that's the first five sides done and uh, I redesigned from the CAD part I mean right from the beginning I made these tabs on the top and the bottom a little bit wider and then they're a little bit too wide so I have to file a fraction off and now it fits really really tight and the first pieces that I did are not quite so tight so they can come out fairly easily at this point but uh, but when the bottom goes on it's all going to be very tight still didn't really need to make these bigger actually probably would have been okay as they were perfect all looks pretty good to me um, it's a little bit hard to see things in this harsh light so I might take this inside and show it to you at the desk instead. Okay here we go this is probably a better way to let you see what it looks like. You can see it fits together about as good as I could have expected really. Um, I'm quite happy with it. You can actually see I can tell looking at the edge which ones were done with which settings. So the one here by my thumbnail that was the I think that was going at 0 0.3 millimeters per step and it was a little bit rougher movement and then the one over on this side I think that would have been done with 0 0.1 millimeters per step um, so a lot smoother but um, yeah I'm very pleased with it so this little gouge here was the one that um, got flicked out of the workpiece by the bit as it was spinning around and this piece here is the only one that seems a little bit loose but it only seems loose oh okay <laughs> comes out but the rest of them are quite quite nice and tight um, so another thing that I got in the mail the 4mm collet that I re wanted to replace because the one that I got from Banggood was terrible and I can tell just by looking at these which one it is and I think I'll have to put a little marker on the screen over the top here to show you exactly what I'm talking about but you can see that the edge of that sort of indented piece at the bottom on the one on the right is kind of rounded and on the one on the left which is the new one which I got here in New Zealand from trade tools cost about as much as actually cost about twice as much as the full set of seven that I got from Banggood so it was about 25 New Zealand dollars for this one here um, but that one has a perfectly flat edge along there uh, so I haven't tried that out yet but I'm expecting that it will be perfectly fine and the one on the right I think I'm just gonna throw this in trash because it was useless